I would like to uh, introduce our last speaker, certainly not the least, to, to present a video on uh, high food treatment of adenomyosis and myoma. Uh, he is Dr. Wei Chun Chen, a visiting staff of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology of the Gynecologic Oncologist Group of the Changgong Memorial Hospital in Taoyuan. He's a member of the Taiwan Association of Obstetric and Gynecology and an associate member of the Taiwan Association of Gynecologic Oncology. He's in fact a director and member of the Taiwan Society of the Gynecologic High Food Treatment and a member of the Taiwan Society for Peritoneal Surface Malignancy. His research interests are, of course, gynecologic oncology, surgical oncology, as well as chemotherapy. But his focus, and he will talk about it, is high-intensity focused ultrasound in gynecologic benign tumor. So I'd like to yield the floor to Professor Dr. Wei Chun Chen. Good evening. I'm Dr. From Chang'e Memorial Hospital of Linko. My name is Wei Jun Chen. Uh, thanks to FH giving me a chance to have a talk here tonight. My speech is the high food treatment of leomyoma and adenosis. I will also show the video demo. And this is the outline of my speech. And the high food is high intensity focused ultrasound. It's a non-invasive treatment for leomyoma. High food utilizes the physical characteristics of the ultrasonic wave, such as tissue penetration and the focus ability. It can penetrate the abnormal wall and focus the tumor inside body. So the energy produced in focused area can destroy the tissue by coagulation necrosis. So this is a swine liver translation view. We can see high food at an acoustic channel and focus at the internal target to make the focus site turn to white color as coagulation necrosis without damage to surrounding normal tissue. So high food can make the swine liver to coagulation necrosis during high food ablation. From gross view of tissue transition, the treated area turned to white. Besides under real time ultrasound during high food, the coagulation necrosis area also turned to a bright sign. We call it grayscale change. High food can make cavitation reaction in the treated tissue. Cavitation can make a bubble oscillation reaction in tissue when the energy accumulation to a stress holding it. Bubble is pulled and then occurred and make the local tissue coagulation necrosis. The post NI view can also see the necrosis part turn to non perfusion area. The coagulation necrosis can make the local cell necrosis in acute phase and the delayed phase due to muscular destroy. Local cell apoptosis will also occur, and the dead cell debris was then cleared by the immune cell, that lead to tumor reduction. And our high food center, Chang'e Memorial Hospital, Taoyuan High Food Center, located in northern Taiwan. So this is uh, our high food center start since 2015. We are one of the earliest hospitals to involve high food as a treatment of myoma and adenomyosis. Last year, last year we had treated once 130 cases. We the machine of high food we applied is Chongqing high food machines. So in our center, a standard high food machine with the meeting room and then observation room can make a good high food treatment as well as high food teaching and the training in our center. Here I will show you the size reduction rate in our center. We had calculated the data during 2015 to 2017. Since time limit issue, I will only add this basic treatment data here. There were 139 myomas and 124 adenomyosis in the three year data. The median myoma size was 8.4 centimeters and the adenomyosis was 7.9 centimeter. The high food treatment duration was around 87 to 106 minutes. The sonication time was 923 and 744 seconds. Here is the size reduction rate by different estimation timing. The non-perfusion area ratio 
after high food by NRI was 90 to 100%. The three month size reduction rate was around 50%. 12 month size reduction rate was around 60%. We can see even 48 months, the four year size reduction rate can be measured as 70%. So I would like to show a video demo of myoma case here. This 33, 32 years old lady had no pregnant history, no operation or disease history. She had myoma diagnosed at least three years. She usually had dysmenorrhea, voiding frequent symptoms. The pre high food lab data showed normal range of CA125 and LDH. That suggests the myoma was favored a benign lesion. So from the pre hypo NRI, we can see in T2 weighted image, the myoma was hypo intensity. That means the myoma may be hypo vascularity and the energy can be left for a long time inside. So the myoma and the myoma was at anterior wall and the size is seven centimeter. From T1 contrast enhanced image, the lesion was hypo intensity based on T1 enhanced and T2 weight image. We can predict it may have good response to high food for such myoma. The future of myoma operation, since myoma has a capsule, the energy can be limited by this capsule and the accumulation. The intensity inside myoma the accumulation energy can then make the general aberration that usually use the concentrated high dose energy strategy for the myoma aberration. So we can see here is the ACL view of myoma. When we treat, use high food to treat the myoma, we usually use the ACL view of myoma and the, the ACL view can separate to several five millimeter phases. Then we weak then to abrasion, we firstly choose the central largest space under the high full treat view. Under the high full treated view, we can image the myoma as a four quantum view and choose the deep and the full side as the initial treated point to give energy, the yellow point. And after treating the yellow point, we can give high dose energy to the neighbor point, the brown point. That is the central phase. And after the central phase treatment, then we choose the neighbor phase to high dose energy treatment. We also treat the deep and the full side, the yellow point, then to the brown point. Then go on another side, neighbor to the central phase to high dose energy treatment. We also treat the deep, deep, uh, deep and the full side, firstly, the yellow point and then the brown point. So usually after energy focus on central three phases, there is a great scale change as coagulation necrosis can be seen via real ultrasound, real time ultrasound. The coagulation necrosis area can even larger than the treatment core since the energy can extend about one centimeter from the focus target. So after Concentrate energy given, then start to put energy to other untreated area by phase. We notice the most lateral two phases should be omitted since the energy can extend one centimeter from the focus target. So we need to omit the lateral two phases to avoid energy exposure to outside organ. Here, the reinforcement treatment was along the deep arc lining of the myoma edge with the same dose of energy given. So here I show the video demo of the myoma hybridization. First, we check the first treated point in the large central phase. We then use the balloon, like the picture, to put the balloon between hypo probe and abdominal wall. It can make the focus inside the tumor. So besides, the balloon can also make compression to push away the bulb from the high velocity channel. So, 
So after Baron set up, we then establish, establish the treated basis. Then we use concentrated energy strategy to put the high dose energy to the central large three phase firstly. Like we just say, we choose the central large large phase phase, and then we started to treat the deep and the full side of the myoma. And the first treat the the yellow point and the, to the other brown point. After the central phase, we treat the neighbor phase. Like we just said, we also treat the deep and the full side. Firstly. So during our treatment, we can compare the picture. The left side is the pre high full view and the right side is under high full treatment view. And we can compare the two view and we can see there is obvious gray scale change of myoma. The myoma getting much, much bright than treatment, than, than untreated phase. So we, Sometimes we need to take the rest of the skin. So we can see there is cluster, gray scale change can be seen during high full ablation. That is a coagulation necrosis sign of ultrasound finding. And we usually make a storage of the picture during treatment. So after cluster gray scale change was found, focus energy along the cluster area to expand the cluster change. So the after the, the central three phase treatment, we started to put the energy to the other untreated phases to make the energy reinforcement. Also the treated point was along the arc line of the myoma edge. Yeah. So during treatment, we need to notice the, the, the edge of the myoma and is there any other soft tissue between the skin and the uterus. We need to avoid to, to, to the focus, to prevent the focus outside the uterus. And then, When we treat the left lateral side, we need to make sure the left side limit and to see if the left side is completely treated. So after the left side treated, we turn to the right side myoma treatment. The same, the same as previous treated. We need to make the treaty point along the arc lining of the myoma. And uh, once every time we start to check the treat the face, we need to measure how the distance between the focus to the myoma edge. Okay. So after the left side and the right side treatment, we can see the obvious gray scale change you know, in the myoma. Then we remove the water balloon and make sure the internal gray scale change to see is there any other part of myoma still not treated. Also, we use the DOPA to make sure is there any 
internal buffer inside the myeloma. If there is still buffer inside the myeloma, we need to make the reinforcement of the energy. Of course, many countries use the contrast medium to confirm is there any buffer inside. But because in Taiwan, there is no legal contrast medium indicated for gynecology tumor. So in Taiwan, we still use only very simple the Doppler ultrasound to make sure is there is is there is no flow inside the myeloma. So we can see this myeloma has full of great scale change without the internal bravo. The bravo only at the at the surrounding area. That's okay. So the cluster grayscale change found at 385 seconds of sonication. And the treatment finished at 850 seconds of sonication. No central flow after high flow. The total treatment was 112 minutes. High flow average power was 400 water with total energy was 339,700 joules. So this is the immediate NRI after high food. Both T2 and the T1 enhanced image showed mass as 7.2 centimeter without, with no in reduction, with central non perfused area ratio about 100%. So we can compare the, this patient's pre high food and the post high food NRI we can see the central coagulation across area with no contrast flow into that area. So after one month follow-up, the myeloma shrink to 5.8 centimeter, the volume reduction rate about 45%. And after further three months follow-up, the myeloma shrink to 4.7 centimeter, the volume reduction rate about 70%. Then here we introduce a very classic adenomyosis treatment video demo. This 42 years old lady had one cesarean section history. She had no chronic medical disease, but ever received a blotomy in 2013. And her adenomyosis had been found for four years and it makes her hypermenorrhea with dysmenorrhea. She had tried Visang and Gestion before, but both were not satisfied. She had elevated CA125 as 96.3. So this is her pre high food NRI. She had posterior adenomyosis size as 5.2 centimeter to 60.1. So this is her T2 image of NRI. We can see the myeloma was a posterior agency adenomyosis size is 4.8 to 7.7 centimeter. Her T1 weighted image showed hypo intensity. So it can predict her adenomyosis may, may have good response to high food. So the high food feature of adenomyosis. Traditionally, adenomyosis can be classified as intrinsic or extrinsic by the junction layer near endometrium or serosa. And this is the intrinsic type. First is the intrinsic type adenomyosis. The adenomyosis part is near endometrium. And the extrinsic type adenomyosis in the figure two, the adenomyosis part is near serosa. So since adenomyosis has no capsule like myoma, so 
it may easy to spread to area outside adenomyosis. So when we perform HIFU, we need to, to be careful of endometrium and the cellulose lining during treatment. Usually the intrinsic type was easy to, the, the energy when we treat the intrinsic type was easy to endometrium and the extrinsic type was easy to cellulose. So when we perform high food for adenomyosis, unlike myoma, we need to use average low dose energy strategy and the individual reinforcement of energy after general energy application. So we also start the ACL view of adenomyosis. Also, ACL view of adenomyosis can be separate to several five millimeter phase. When we use to perform hyper, we also choose the central largest phase. So we need to, we can see the hyper treated view. Yeah, when we perform hyper for adenomyosis, we need to confirm the endometrium and the cellulose lining. Well, after we confirm the endometrium and the, and the cellulose lining, we also choose the deep and full site as the initial treated point, the yellow point. And then after the yellow point, we, we put the energy on the brown point. So the same as myoma, we, after central phase treatment, we choose the neighbor phase to treat. Also treat the deep and the full site firstly. Yeah. Then go on another side, neighbor to central face. Also treat the deep and the full side firstly, then to the other neighbor points. So like myoma, then after treat the central three phases, we then started to put energy to other area face by face. Uh, also, we, we must notice the most lateral two phases should be omitted to avoid energy exposure to outside organ. So in other phase, we use the low dose energy to put it, to put to loss, loss po point along the deep arc lining of the mass's edge. So after put the every phase, every every treated phase, then we perform a Doppler ultrasound to see if there is still any other far flow inside the adenomyosis. If still flow inside the adenomyosis, we can make individual reinforcement of energy to treat the, the low internal flow. So here is the video demo of adenomyosis. Yeah, when we treat the adenomyosis, we can compare the NRI and we need to measure the distance to skin to check the endometrium and the cellulose lining. Then we use Doppler to check pre hyphal bar flow of adenomyosis. So we can see there is many soft tissue like ball between the uterus and the abdominal wall. So we also put the balloon to make compression. The balloon compression can push ball away from the acoustic channel and then make our focus inside adenomyosis. Yeah. So after compression, we can push push the bow away of the acoustic channel. Then we started to treat the adenomyosis. Also, we use average low dose energy strategy. We choose central three phases to give energy firstly. Yeah. So this is the central phase. Yeah. We also treat treat the deep and full side. And uh, after the central phase, we go to the neighbor phase to treat. So during treatment, we can see the, the gray scale change can already be seen. But we also notice there's some bright 
bright, bright tissue between the uterus and the abdominal wall. So when we treat it, we need to check if, if this is a, only a bright reflex or some foul involvement in our acoustic channel. So this is under the central face treatment. Then after central face treatment, we started to put energy to other untreated area. This patient was started to treat make treatment from the right side. Also, we make the treat point along the arc line of the adenomyosis edge. <laughs> So this is still under treatment. So once we treat every face, we need to confirm if 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 this face is near the 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 edge of adenomyosis. So we need to confirm the right side image to confirm if the right side already finished treatment. Now after right side treatment. We go to another side, left side, to put energy on the left side. So this is the left side. We can see there is great scale change compared with the pre high view. Yeah. So we, this view is confirmed the left side limit to check if the left side of adenomyosis has already been treated. Yeah. Now we can see, compared with the pre hyper view, the general grayscale change can be seen. So after the left side and the right side treatment, we then remove the balloon to see if there is general grayscale change inside the adenomyosis. Yeah. So compare with the Untreated view, we can see general grayscale change can be seen after high food. Then we use Doppler ultrasound to see if there is still any blood flow inside the treated area. If there is still blood flow inside the adenomyosis, we need to make low dose energy reinforcement. So this patient, after high food, had caused a great scale change since 492 seconds. We finished our high food treatment at 520 seconds. Her post high food MRI showed in of T2 and T1 enhanced image showed the adenomyosis size was <coughs> five to six. 6.1 centimeter. The maroon reduction rate is about 33%. The non perfusion area ratio is 97%. Yeah. This is her compared to the pre hypo and the post hypo NRI. So we can see the hypo, the after hypo, the non perfusion area can be produced. but the energy was very close to the endometrium. So when we treat the adenomyosis, we also need to confirm if the patient had any pregnancy demand and control the, the treated the, the, the energy of the dose we give to the adenomyosis. 
So after the high flu, the this patient's total treatment duration was 125 minutes. The sonication time was 520 seconds. Yeah. After high flu, we use we we give the GnRH and dinodrest for the for the post high flu treatment. So this this is the post follow post high flu follow up view. So after two months of follow up, the ultrasound showed the adenomatous size shrink to three point six to four point five centimeter, with the size reduction rate about seventy five percent. So the summary of my surgical video talk. Is HIFU use the characteristic of ultrasound to penetrate tissue, and the high intensity ultrasound can treat internal mass without injury to skin or uterine surface. So it can achieve the real non invasive surgery. And for the myoma treatment of HIFU, we, we usually use concentrated high dose energy strategy to, to treat the central three large base to produce the core of the coagulation of necrosis. And then after the core, the core of coagulation necrosis was produced, we can put energy along the, along the core to make the core occupy the whole myoma. For adenomyosis for adenoma of hyper treatment, we should protect the endometrium with a safe margin. So we consider average low dose energy strategy to put the low dose energy to hold the whole adenomyosis. And then after put the whole adenomyosis, we can use Doppler ultrasound to see if there is still any residual blood flow inside the adenomyosis. Then if there is still flow, we can make individual reinforcement of energy to lose residual flow site. So thanks for attention. Yeah, thanks for FH to give me a chance to have talk here. Uh, if any question, welcome to email me. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chen. Uh, very interesting and engaging talk. We have a lot of questions in the chat box. Apparently, your talk has generated a lot of interest in our audience. So I'd like to read the question. We have time to have a Q&A. So the first is from Dr. Olaric. The adenomyosis, for adenomyosis, do you use medications such as GnRH agonist or deinogest plus HIFU? I think it was in one of your slides. Dr. Chen, kindly answer. Yeah. I usually use I I, I use GnRH agonist of the sun. I after high flu after high flu because like like just Professor Zhen said, yeah, after high flu treatment we still cannot confirm is there the the every adenomyosis cell can be treated by high flu. So I usually use GnRH after high flu. To 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 give to the give the possible residual edema cell treatment and Thank the you. Bison and the dinogest I also use for a maintenance treatment. Yeah. Well, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So from Dr. Matepan. In the treatment cycle for adenomyosis, I suppose that's a high flow treatment. Is it necessary that you should avoid treatment during the menstrual phase? Okay. Oh, and sometimes because I sometimes the patients may 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 have prolonged menstruation or prolonged spotting due to adenomyosis, so it may. It is hard to prevent high flu performed not in breathing breathing time. So if so we usually we we usually said we need to we, we can perform high during menstruation, but we need to avoid the, the most 
largest amount stay. Yeah. If Maybe the yeah. the if the menstruation is a little bit, that is okay. Okay, maybe at the end of the menstrual cycle, right? So uh, another from Dr. Ala Wise, can we treat a huge myoma, meaning larger than 12 by 12 centimeter? So do we have limits, Dr. Chen, for the size? Yeah, I, the size is not an issue because I will check if the, the, the huge myoma is over umbilicus. I usually, uh, we, the high food usually need to avoid the acoustic channel to pass away the umbilicus because uh, the umbilicus is easy to have burn, burn, burn injury. So if the bioma is over the umbilicus, uh, we, we, we may need a, we need, we need some medication like, like GNRH to make the myoma and shrink below the umbilicus, then we can treat it. So the, the size is not is not really an issue. Okay. Of course, of course, there is some paper said when myoma over ten centimeter, it may have much more risk uh, to a uh, like bowel injury or nerve injury or or tumor lysis syndrome during during ablation. But in our center, we 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 have not made, made such such problem. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. This is from uh, Professor Tsumi Osama. Your hospital is very famous. I think that's Janggung <laughs> for laparoscopic surgery. Is there any guideline for indication between laparoscopic myomectomy or HIFU? I mean, how do you choose the cases? Which one goes to HIFU and which one goes to laparoscopy? Dr. Chen. Yeah, and because the HIFU is has, has very high cost in Taiwan. So, so uh, if people, we usually... Sometimes we need to see if the patient's insurance, uh, if the patient can afford high food. And I will, I, I will give, oh, give, oh, give it may a be choice. Depend on the patient, maybe. It depends on the patient. Depend on the patient. patient choose choice of the patient, maybe. Yeah, if patient want high food, I will, mm. okay. I will see, see I if there are any yeah, mm -hmm. it's any control indication to okay. these patients. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Another, so your talk is very uh, engaging for our audience from Dr. Eileen about uh, for adenomyosis. Maybe you should confirm because of the uniqueness of the disease. We usually use three steps. I think this is a commentary. You first use high food, the GNRH or the Inogest, the third and maybe the third option is TCRE plus Mirena. So that may be just a, um, just a commentary. Here's one question from the Philippines from my colleague, Dr. Karin Reforma. What's the recurrence rate of adenomyosis myoma after high food treatment? Dr. Chen, please. Okay. Uh, for, our, uh, for our experience, we can uh, we can see uh, the health treatment. The uh, if the recovery means the mass get re enlarged after high food. Yeah, we can see there. You should there uh, almost about ten percent, ten percent recovery after high food. Of course, in this recurrent in this patient with recurrence, we can see. Their mass sometimes is much bigger is is much bigger than other without recurrence. So, so we 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 still need to uh, when we choose patient for high food, we still need to if the patient if if the mass is much is much bigger or if the mass is has much more buffer, and we need to use some medication before high food. To make the mass shrink or and the vascular and shrink, and then we treat the high food, and we use the high food to treat. 
that may make much more a um, good response, better response. Okay, so thank you, Dr. Chen. I guess that was the last question.